What's up everyone, Arctic here, bringing you guys a brand new Gears of War Judgment discussion video. Today I'm going to be focused on talking mostly about the new free-for-all map streets. Uh, I shouldn't call it a free-for-all map, multiplayer map. Uh, we are watching free-for-all gameplay. I'm also going to be uh, talking about the Marksa and the Bushka a little bit in this video and possibly a couple other topics that come to mind. Now if you guys missed uh, my hour and a half long live stream that I did on Twitch, I have the link down in the description that takes you to all the videos in one spot so you guys can check that out. That's basically uh, a no down but not out discussion. Throughout this week I'm going to have another uh, number of other videos that are going to come out that uh, you guys will be able to watch and hear my thoughts on the direction of the game. Now, um, what you guys heard from me previously is basically all I could talk about. I talked about free for all, I talked about overrun, those are both pretty good. Um, as we start to move towards some of this other stuff, you're going to hear me maybe change my tone a little bit, um, but not all of the changes, and I said this in my stream, not all the changes I agree with, uh, but that being said, I still feel like this is a really solid game. Now, if you take away uh, basically all that you've come to know about Gears of War, you just saw this as a new IP, new game, I think most people would be like, damn, this is this game is pretty good, but instead... Um, a lot of the people that are used to what they've always known with Gears of War are kind of upset. And, I, you know, I understand that, uh, but, you know, I like to judge games on the merits of their quality and their standard, not, you know, some type of nostalgia that I have towards the game. That's not that's not what to me what judging a game is about. So I just want to make that clear. Now, talking about streets, uh, we're watching free for all gameplay. I said that um, basically it's like an urban industrial map. There are four corners of the map that uh, I think when we play tested, they weren't distinct. So, uh, you know, we were just like, oh, that building. I mean, they had some stuff inside that you could be like, hey, you know, I kind of recognize that. That looks like a, a shop of some sort, like a, I don't think anyone said a, a, a butcher shop, but um, that's one of the call outs that you guys make. So I'm basically going to break it down like um, I was doing like a competitive match and using call outs. So there's four corners of the map, uh, CJ's car shop. That side, um, the car shop actually housed the Bushka when we played. I didn't actually see that being used in this free-for-all gameplay. But, uh, yeah, the Bushka was up there. If you guys aren't familiar with the Bushka, it's basically, to me, the, the uh, projectiles look like uh, the flat cannon. The flat balls from the flat cannon in Unreal Tournament uh, has some similar properties. It will bounce off of walls. I don't remember how many exactly. I think maybe two, three. Uh, Skyless was really digging this. Uh, it's basically a grenade launcher. Uh, layman's terms, flat cannon is a grenade launcher, uh, does explosion damage, and when you get a kill because of the name, you have to scream BUSHKA! So I hope when you're in free-for-all, and hopefully the mics are turned on so you get to hear some other people talking, and you kill someone with a BUSHKA, you definitely have to yell that out um, just so you can maybe do like a little bit of a humiliation kill on some people because it's pretty, it's pretty awesome. Um, so adjacent to that, you have the uh, Steelworks... Sabata factor. Well, I don't know what it is. Anyway, you guys are watch Terminator 2 inside of that that Steelworks factory kind of looks like that uh, where the T-1000 dies in that molten uh, Lava whatever it is Molten liquid fire um, So yeah, that's that's kind of how I knew that the uh, torque bow was actually in there and I didn't see that at all either so um, Those were in those two buildings on the opposite side of the map. You have uh, what is now a bookstore or something like that so di directly across from uh, the steelworks you have the bookstore that I don't think that had anything in it um, when we played it it was just like I mean you could run up there and, and it connects out to the middle area but uh, there was there was nothing in there now there's like a piece of uh, cover in the middle so it looks a little bit more fleshed out almost like it's ready for a final release and then uh, adjacent to that building you have the pork shop butcher shop um, now that whole little alley there with the uh, barricade the cement barricade and and uh, I think there's some sandbags down there that was like a high octane area because you get people that end up dropping down on that area there's an ammo box right there so people would sometimes if they were low on ammo they go down and grab ammo refill their grenades whatever and then inside the shop it's just like a long corridor so uh, th there was a lot of shotgun action in that spot when we played it uh, there was also a lot of uh, opportunity for you to, you know, lance or rifle down somebody uh, that happened to be caught with their pants down in, in one of those areas. So that area is pretty cool. Now, upstairs at the, the uh, pork shop, 
that's also completely different from when I play tested it. There was no, it was not that lit. It looked a little bit darker. Um, it had like a tannish look to it. Like it was, I don't know. Now, now it's white and blue. It looks similar to, uh, Blood Drive actually, uh, with the colors and the hospital and, uh, actually both sides of the hospital. So you have like the, uh, the big meat hooks that are holding, I'm assuming it's pork, uh, up there. Uh, that was, that was not there when we played. Um, and then there's, I think, cover now coming near that window uh, that's right there and that wasn't there as well so there's definitely been a few uh, tweaks since we played the map uh, now those three buildings that I just talked about the uh, pork shop the bookstore and the steelworks they all connect to a middle building um, and there's a lot of action on that that mid area uh, it's really good for shooting down on players uh, up on the top, you could drop down and uh, right in that middle area, there used to be an incendiary grenade, uh, but I didn't, again, I didn't see that as well. So I don't know if it's just different swaps that they have for free for all or if they were just trying to show off a couple different things. Uh, but that area just basically connected uh, one side of the map to the other. All in all, it played out pretty fast. Uh, there was a couple really high uh, action, fast paced areas, I guess, uh, where you had to be on your toes. One of them was at the red crate. Um, out in that open area there seemed like there was a lot of action there also on the top building top mid building was a lot of uh, area by the uh, ventilation uh, system and then in that alleyway down by the the uh, pork shop was also a lot of action now uh, the marksa which is also used in this video is basically a sniper that you can choose for your loadouts I'm gonna have a separate video talking about the loadouts and what you guys think on them uh, here this week, but basically, in my opinion, the Marksa replaces the Boltok. Um, from my understanding, I, you know, I didn't really see uh, any Boltok in the game, um, but that basically kind of operates the same. Uh, you have it's it's pretty accurate. Boltok was pretty accurate. Uh, you can headshot your opponents. Both uh, the Boltok could headshot. I think it was also a, it was either two or three shot. I don't remember. I didn't use the Boltok a lot. And I actually forgot. Now, that's kind of weird. Uh, but this is a two-shot headshot with the Marksa. So, uh, you know, if you're pretty accurate, you can take down some heads and kind of be the sniper for your team. Um, when it's unscoped, it has a lot more recoil than when it's scoped. So if you're scoping uh, for shots, uh, which you get, it's semi-automatic, so you can tap it pretty quick to try to pull off two consec uh consecutive shots to get off a headshot but uh yeah i mean it's it's a decent weapon i didn't spend a whole lot of time using it um because there could be a long shot on the map and uh, a breach shot on the map not on streets per se but uh and a map like i believe library has the breach shot and also has a sniper so if you choose chose a mark so it's basically you have three snipers on the map so i just i didn't see the point in having it really um on streets there was actually a long shot up in uh pork the pork shop so I don't know I definitely felt like it could be used in some spots but uh, for the most part especially in free-for-all you want to have really fast kills in order to um, you know kind of consistently win and to me the the Nasher or sometimes the sawed off uh, ended up being the weapon that you wanted to choose so hope you guys enjoyed this breakdown of street uh, I will have another video on the loadouts system and how it works uh, here this week uh, so stay tuned, guys, and until the next time, I'll catch you later. Peace. Killacious. Obliterific. D-D-D-D-Structionation.